That's a blood. Yeah. Who drinks this? Nani na kunyo eh. It's good to drink this one. I should drink it. Yeah. Okay. Last time on part one of our Maasai series, I joined Jacob as he showed me around a traditional Maasai village. What is going on? This is goat sushi. Yeah, yeah. Historically, the Maasai eat from three main food groups, meat, milk, and raw blood. You want to test the blood? What? Huh? Is there a right way to do this? Yeah. Get it. And that is why the lion is very strong. Just a few hours from Kenya's capital city of Nairobi, we've come to a new Maasai village near Amaseli National Park. We just uh, have one cow, we tie the neck, and then we just get the blood. Then all the warriors, we sit together, then we have some cups of uh, blood. Twice a week, villagers take part in a tradition that would shock most outsiders. They're tightening a rope around his neck. Yeah, it's kind of like to find the vein, but it also helps to control the bleeding. Oh! Oh my god! Today we're digging deeper into the lifestyle of Kenya's unique tribal people, the Maasai. Good morning, everybody. Today we are in Amboseli, right outside of a Maasai Complex? Would village. you call it that? Village. But when you look from the air, it is actually complicated, like a complex. Yeah, okay. Here they have about 10 different houses, and then inside they have all their cows, all their different kind of grazing cattle. So their cows are very precious to them. That's why they're like put in the center of the home for protection. Mm. So if any wildlife comes in, then they have to go through the guides first to get to the animals. The symbol of prosperity and wealth here, it's not your bank account. It's your cattle. How many cattle do you have? A Maasai man never see the number of animals. Ah. You see, it's just like uh, when you ask a white person, how much money do you have in your account? Yes. So let's go and see the goat. Okay, fair yes. enough. Are they killing it or not? No, they're not killing it. They're just using a bow and arrow to nick the jugular at close range. They'll let it clot right up. And it's just like when you donate blood, yeah. Yeah, like you're able to walk out afterwards. That's why cows are actually rarely eaten. Instead, they utilize the nutrition they provide, like milk and blood. Why are they doing this? Because they need nutrition. Like cow blood is, has like a lot of protein, which is good for them. So what we're going to be witnessing today is them mixing the blood of the cow with the milk. So basically like a cow puccino. <laughs> you just say cow puccino? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Time to meet the villagers. The Maasai are polygamous, so even though there are 101 people in this village, they belong to just four families, all living in houses like this. Can you remind me your name again? My name is Paul. Paul? Yeah. Okay, what's your Maasai name? Penetti. Penetti? Yes. Which one do you prefer? Penetti. All right, I like that one too. This is your home right here? Yeah. These houses are built of wood and cow dung. That's Maasai cement, I saw you saying Cement, the yeah. Maasai cement. I know, I got it all over my shoes. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> How many rooms do you have inside? Just uh, one big room? We have two rooms. So this one is your home? Yeah. Oh, here's another window. The window and the window. Oh, wow. So this is the room for the children. This is the bed for them. You see the mattress is the skin of the cow. And there's some windows here. It's very cool in here. There's another window here. Then we proceed to see the parents' room. And then you put some fire here. Yeah, the kitchen whereby we are using, and uh, these are the fire for lighting fire. Usually cooking is done indoors, as evidenced by the thick soot caked on the ceiling. Today, they'll cook outside. These days, as modern influences begin to permeate the Maasai culture, they've started eating slightly less meat and much more maize flour porridge. What did you eat for breakfast this morning? We drink, uh, we prepare porridge, then uh, we just mix with some milk, then uh, we drink for breakfast. Is that every day? Every day. How many of those cups do you have in a day? Oh, very strong breakfast. Corn grows easily in sandy soil and in this unforgiving climate. It's the most affordable way to get calories. But the porridge wouldn't be complete if they didn't add some fresh cow milk. This is a modern Maasai breakfast. Have you had this before? Yeah, I have had this before. Okay, this is breakfast here. It's breakfast, but they also have it during the day. Yeah, it's like an anytime meal. Oh, it is thick. Ooh, I like that milk taste in it. This is right from the cow. It's like two hours, you know, it was milked like two hours earlier. The other guy was telling me he drinks four of these in the morning. 
four of these in the morning. Yeah. How many do you think you would need? I would probably like even struggle to finish this one because it is a lot of like carb in it. You need this if you're going to do some sort of manual labor. If you're going to be out in the field all day, then you can drink four. While the cows are still here and before they go to pasture, there is one more breakfast item we are missing. It's kind of a calf, huh? So what's happening now? They're tying... So they're tying this? Oh! It's... They're tightening a rope around his neck. Yeah, it's kind of like to find the vein, but it also helps to control the bleeding. Have you taken blood from this before? No, not yet. This is the vein right here, and they're going to put an arrow. They're going to launch an arrow right into the neck. He's coming here with the arrow. All right, here it goes. He's going to... Oh, my God. Oh, no, it didn't work. I am a... What do you say? Imado? Imado? It just need the experience. What's going on? So it's he says it's because they hadn't tightened the the rope very fast, like they hadn't tightened the rope around the neck. Yeah. So that's why it's taking a while to like get the blood gushing out. Oh my gosh. Yeah. But usually it's just instant. Them, this is not brutality. Okay. <sighs> they really revive the cows here. The cows are very precious and sacred to them. Mm. So they're very well looked after. Mm. And this is not done to them like every single day. Oh sh It's like when you if you eat meat, mm. if you're a meat eater then you're cruel anyway. <laughs> All right, so he's got the arrow. Here we go. Oh! Oh my God! Oh no! Wow! It's just pouring out. How does? How do they stop it? Oh wow, they just cover it with. Are they covering it with? Yeah, it's just like a pressure bandage. Who, who drinks this? I should drink it? Yeah. Okay. You know, so usually it's good for like pregnant women or if you're sick or if you've just come from a long night out in the field and you just need to like an energy boost then you'll drink this. Oh wow. Wow, that's a lot. I don't know that I needed that much. I think I No, no, that's in The blood is mixed with milk to stop it from thickening. Oh, uh, he said just take a couple of sips yeah. Yeah. and then pass. And yeah. pass it on. Yeah. And I'm passing it to you. Yeah. Okay, cool. Is that okay? Yeah. That's okay, yeah. All right. So here we go. The fresh cow blood <laughs> yeah. with some milk. All right, here we go. Oh, that tastes pretty good. Oh, yeah? Yeah. What does it taste like? I mean, it's just like milky. It's almost like a, a, a milk tea. Oh, yeah, cappuccino, <laughs> it's almost, really. <laughs> it's almost like a milky chai, yeah, some yeah. kind of what? That's pretty good, man. That's. It's not bad at all, eh? Wow. It's pretty good. Yeah, it's just milky taste. There's some ironiness from the blood, but the blood is not super strong flavor. Yeah. Drink. No, I'm drinking. <laughs> okay, let's do this. Oh, what kind of drink was that? It's just like tea, by the way. Yeah, you might as well put your pinky out with those tiny sips you're taking. Take a real sip. Hmm? Yeah, it's just like tea. The aftertaste, though, is reminds you it's definitely blood. Comes next. Oh, here's the kid. Here. Oh, yeah, the aftertaste is very irony. The aftertaste is very irony. Oh, he's just going for it. Oh, wow. Oh, he's just going for it. He finished it off? Yeah. Oh, is that good? Nimzuri. Nimzuri. Yeah. Dio. Does that mean it's yummy? It's like yes. yes, yes. It means good? Yeah. Oh my gosh. I gotta say, man, that's quite the breakfast. <laughs> that's a pretty new one for me. Very strong one. That mean, that's probably gonna be the last time I do that. <laughs> yeah, if I had to if I had to wager a guess, I don't think I'll come upon that again in my life. The Maasai live and eat like no culture I've seen before. But is it a matter of time before modern day influences begin to erode their culture and customs completely? <laughs> 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 <laughs>
We're looking at about 20 elephants right now. This is amazing. Amboseli, it's about 392 square kilometers. There's plenty of elephants here, as you can see, like right before us right now. If you measure wealth in sneakers and flat screen TVs, then no, the Maasai are not wealthy. But here, cattle is the ultimate currency. All these cattle add up to big bucks. So why don't the Maasai just sell their cattle and move to Nairobi in pursuit of a more modern life in the city? I don't like Nairobi. A lot of noise, a lot of vehicles, but here, very peaceful. No noise, no disturbing. It's just in the nature. So you're not tempted to go to the big city no. to live there, to try to get an apartment or a house? No, no, no. Only because, uh, because of schooling. But after schooling, back to the village. It seems with tourism, it is in some way affecting the Maasai people. So Maasais were traditionally very nomadic. Now you find that they come and set up a home close to where the tourist lodges and camps are so that they're able to get, you know, all these visitors that want to come and experience the Maasai culture. This is a traditionally nomadic culture, moving every few months in search of better cattle grazing lands. But the village we visited today has been here for over 10 years. If they leave now, their spot will be taken by another village. One that's willing to entertain tourists with traditional singing, dancing, and fire making. A loss of culture may be a lost opportunity for travelers and tourists, but it may also mean progress for local people, better access to education, and an abundance of new opportunities as they move toward the future. 20 years from now, is there still Maasai culture as we've seen today? I really do think so because Kenya has been developing, there have been like cities coming up, buildings mm -hmm. being put up, but they've really stayed true to their ways. I mean, we will have a lot more Maasais going to school and becoming doctors and moving to urban areas, moving out of Kenya and traveling to see the world, mm -hmm. but then there's still definitely going to be like that really core group that just sticks to their way of life. Huge thank you to Holiday Destination Safaris for putting this itinerary together for us here in Kenya. Also for you guys, if you're going to Vietnam anytime soon, I highly recommend a company called One Trip. One Trip is the highest rated tour company in Vietnam, doing tours from north to south in all major cities, including Hanoi, Nha Trang, Da Nang, Hoi An, and Saigon. You can experience food tours, adventure tours, and more. To learn more about One Trip, check out the links in the description down below. I will see you next time. A piece.